Welcome back to Let's Play The Maw. I'm Burning Dog Face, and last time I finished the game. But I didn't finish everything I came here to do. So before we call this one a series, I wanted to, uh... take another whack at this deleted scene. Yeah, it's the only one where I didn't get the, uh... the snuffle. First things first, since I never actually did this, let's see what happens if I just try to wander over here. Hey guys, can I borrow your ship? I need to leave this planet. That would be a no. <laughs> oh, come on, man. I'll be your friend. What about you, buddy? Everybody's a critic. Fine! I also wanted to share with you guys something kind of ridiculous that I found uh, after I beat the game. Uh, specifically, I was looking at the page in the giant bomb database for the Maw. And the overview is about what you'd expect. Oh, Frank has to help the Maw grow bigger while... Uh, Solving environmental puzzles and uh, evading the galactic bounty hunters. And, uh... Then I scrolled down and I found a section... That, uh, kind of gave me pause. And rather than, uh, just reading it off the screen... I've prepared this little dramatic reading for you. <laughs> Characters. Frank. Frank is a Teltarian who has been captured by the Galactic Bounty Hunters. His planet was quarantined by the Galactic Council due to the psychic emanations caused by the gemstones on their head, an ability which also allows him to keep control over the Maw and hypnotize it into not eating him. He quickly befriends the Maw in order to help himself escape the planet they become stranded on. The Maw. A small, purple, large-jawed monster with a huge appetite, the Maw is able to devour any creature it comes across, and even absorb any special abilities that creature may have had, such as fiery breath or laser beam eyes. The Maw is practically indestructible. Gunfire and other larger creatures may be able to stun it, but they do not stop him from growing. Galactic Bounty Hunters Their goal is to uphold the will of the Galactic Council, and to protect the citizenry from any creatures which may become a threat to their way of life, no matter how abstract their threats may be. They inhabit large spire towers on each planet, and will send as many troops as required from these spires to capture offending creatures when necessary. Other Creatures Yums! Yums are tiny pink life forms, which may seem cute at first glance, at least to Frank, but are really just the basic food substance for the Maw. They can be found in large groups, and are able to boost the Maw's size fairly easily if enough are consumed. Gastro Fiery hot lizards made from molten rock, Gastros possess a fiery breath attack, allowing them to burn forests and roast their food prior to consumption. If the Maw eats a Gastro, he will inherit their fire-breathing ability. Bulbous Genetically modified flying bug creature, originally created with the intention of being used for organic lightning, or sorry, lighting, and power sources. After the accidental electrocution of a galactic senator's child, the bulbous creatures are now quarantined and executed if found by the galactic bounty hunters, but can prove hard to execute due to their high mobility, as well as their ability to disrupt nearby electronic equipment. Sadly, it ends right there. There's, uh... No information about the other species in the game. 
Which is too bad, really. I was kind of looking forward to hearing about how, uh... Oh, I don't know. About how the Gloobers have a religion based on Feng Shui. Oh, that's not right. I can't do that guy yet. Or how the beetles are all secretly individual parts of the same organism. That's a nice distance on that one. Individual aspects of one mind. I did hear that uh, the Maw also kicks up uh, yums who are hidden underground, so it's uh, somewhat easier to search an area like this where they can just randomly pop up if you've got the Maw on your uh, leash. But yeah, where was any of that information? I mean, it's not in, you know, this stuff, certainly. It's just some legalese in there. <clears throat> Nothing here but actual controls, and then that thing about what the creatures are called. I mean, Giant Bomb, like Wikipedia, is a user-edited database, so it is entirely possible that someone just made all that shit up. You know, full disclaimer, take that with a grain of salt. But, uh... Man, I don't even know anymore. I mean, I did not think of all the things in the game that I wanted an explanation about the gem on his forehead. Hmm. Sticking with those barrels there. Confirmed. A couple of notes I wrote down here. Uh, shout out to Venser's prodigy, who uh, had an amusing uh, summary of this that referred to it, of this game that referred to it as the Mundivore incident. I'm interpreting that correctly. It would refer to a, uh, a creature whose diet consists of worlds. You know what make you feel better, Ma? This. This animation here, where the maw runs straight for the, uh, well, it's not straight, but he runs to the nearest water and douses his mouth is meant to be a hint. Or if they just thought that was funny.
Erizoko found the uh, revelation of the existence of the king, or maybe Queen Yum, to be very disturbing. Because if the Yums are intelligent enough to be uh, to have a king or queen, maybe they were secretly people all along. <laughs> Also suggested maybe the bounty hunters are hired to protect them. And, uh... Conk279 summed up things pretty well by talking about how, uh... The game in general, and Ma... And, sorry, and Frank and the Ma's relationship in particular... Is, uh combination of uh, charming and adorable, yet weirdly horrifying. <laughs> if that weird text I found of the giant bomb uh, database is accurate. Where did you go? There you are. I guess we don't have to worry about the uh, yums being clients of the bounty hunters. I mean, I do feel the need to point out that uh, what they describe in there is not actually bounty hunting. That would make them like some kind of formal galactic council military. Just saying. actually saw this guy's, you know, standard attack. Without, you know, getting out of the way. Hmm. is finished. Noted. in there again. Right, okay. everybody. I mean, you could just eat them, I'm just saying. It's an option. Check out those mushrooms way off in the distance. As I'm like 90% certain I didn't do this the first time. At least not with a maw.
Oh, right, those are the broken coconut things. Last three games I've played, I've come back after the credits to take care of unfinished business. Nice to, uh... Get everything nice and wrapped up by the credit roll next time. Aha! The thing about my unfinished business lately. I still need to go back and finish uh, Bound by Flame. Yakuza Zero. Yes. Sweeping my eyes across here. one in the middle. I know I need to get the, uh, the bug to run through the rock. I remember that part. Glad I did this. I don't know why I just incinerated those guys that are coming up here. Gotta run straight down the middle. I think it's no exaggeration to say this game gets by more on uh, being quirky and charming than it does on its gameplay, but it's pretty short, so that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, if it was like a 60-hour game with kind of meh gameplay that got by on all of its characters being cute and silly, then that would be a problem. That wasn't meant to be shade on anything, by the way. I'm just... Not, like, passive-aggressively describing anything on purpose, at the very least. because I don't get to be here with the beetle power, if I remember correctly. Kind of weird that that power only shows up in this DLC level and in the very last level of the game. But it's mostly weird in that... And that they sort of, like, set up the Beatles kind of early in the campaign, and then had them show up again here and there. And then you finally get to have that power in the last level. But then they went and added a deal. So, you know, that, that kind of progression I understand. 
But then they went and added that, uh... Oh, nice even 30. They went and added that power to a DLC level that takes place right at the beginning. when Mother chases us down uh, I don't remember what happens after that. Okay, there's Mama. Not gonna let us go back at all, huh? So I guess there's no yums hidden in that base. Yeah, that's right. You don't get to go back to the base, which is weird. This makes you wonder why they put those guys there in the first place if the level is named after them. going, and it is. Goodbye, flamethrower power. Oops. I heard that. Okay. He doesn't have any problem walking there when I'm leading him. Uh, I do not remember this part. Do we ram that thing?
Okay, fair. That is a different power. How about that rock? Huh. And one last gastro to, uh, to grow on. Yes! Here it is, one of the ones I forgot to write down. Uh, shout out to Eri Zoko, who left a comment saying, So by this point, we've all just quietly acknowledged that those snuffles are almost certainly some sort of hallucinogenic, right? But explain what these guys seem to be, seem to be trying to keep st secret stashes of them hidden away where others won't find them. <laughs> Well, great, so on top of everything else, the Maw is high right now. And we're, uh... I guess we're on the other side of the bridge. There did go the timer, though. So I guess I will have to continue this uh, journey to, you know, right when, set right what once went wrong, and uh, call it an episode. I'm Burning Dog Face, and I'll see you next time on what will, hopefully, knock on wood, be the last episode of Let's Play The Maw, when we finish off Brute Force, and uh... Maybe, just maybe, get one more achievement out of it. Later!